Hey, it's Miss Miklos, and um, today we're starting section 8.5, which I know this is nerdy, but I think it's actually pretty fun, um, because we're talking about probability. There we go. And um, I think it's always fun when we start doing something that is really applicable to things that we would see in real life. And um, not that every single one of these situations um, is going to directly apply to you, but it definitely will give you... Um, an idea of where we could use some of this math in real life. So today we are only focusing on one concept. We're splitting this um, section up into two days. And today we're talking about what we call the fundamental counting principle. And when we hear this word fundamental, um, it means that it is something that's super, super important. And often we think that things that are important are really difficult. And the good news is today that what we're learning is actually really straightforward. Uh, we just need to think a little bit about it. So the fundamental counting principle is M times N, and these are what we call independent events. And what that means is that the outcome of one event does not affect the outcome of the other event. But if we have two different events going on, then we multiply the options, and that gives us the total number of events. So if we look at number one, Okay, this is like a classic problem that we will see. It says there are four different flights from city A to city B and three different flights from city B to city C. How many different flights are there from city A to C by way of city B? So what we need to think of is how many options are there from A to B times how many options are there from B to C? And that's going to give us our total number. So if we look, it says there are four different flights from A to B, so I'm going to write four in. There are three different flights from B to C, so I'm going to go ahead and write three. I know four times three is 12. So altogether, um, if you were just randomly buying a ticket from A to C and you knew B was your layover, there would be 12 different options that you could possibly take. Okay, number two. The Oregon State University football team is sponsored by Nike, which means that they are nationally known for their awesome uniform options. They have five different types of helmets, four different jerseys, four different pants, three different socks, and three different types of cleats. How many different possible uniform combinations do the Ducks have? And um, you guys can do this with your own wardrobe as well if you're trying to figure out how many cool Lancer outfits can you put together for Friday spirit days? You can take like the number of your tops times the number of the types of pants you're going to wear and it's going to be the fundamental theorem. So we're going to start. We have five different types of helmets, four different jerseys, four different pants, three different socks, and three different types of cleats. So I'm multiplying five times four times four times three times three, which would give us an astounding 720 different uniform options that the ducks can wear. Moving on to number three here. At the addictive Chipotle restaurant, there are various options for a hungry little student to build a burrito. Chipotle offers two types of beans, four types of meat, four types of salsa, four types of condiments. Assuming that you only choose one from each category, how many different ways could a student order a burrito to satisfy his or her appetite? Okay, so I have options for the beans, meat, salsa, and condiments. So there are two types of beans, four types of meat, four types of salsa, and four types of condiments. So when we multiply these all together, two times four times four times four is 128. So there's a lot of problems that are going to be on that level of difficulty where they're just giving us the values and we're multiplying them together. Then there's gonna be some other options here. Um, some other problems where we need to think a little bit more. So number four, it says, how many different license plate number combinations exist? Remember that there are 26 letters in the alphabet and 10 possible single digits because we have one through nine and zero. So the first thing that I need to remember is um, 
in California, license plates have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different values. And if we were being really specific, most license plates, if you're getting a standard license plate, we have a number followed by three letters and then three numbers. But we're being really general here. It's not specifying any of that. So if there are 26 letters and 10 possible single digits, that gives us 36 different options for that first value. Um, notice there are no restrictions here. It doesn't tell us that a value cannot repeat. So that means that there are 36 options for every single value in our license plate. Now this is a really straightforward one. Um, we will look at some other ones that are more restrictive and tell us where can we have numbers, where can we have letters, if things repeat, that sort of thing. When we put this all into our calculator, we actually get a value that's so large our calculator can't handle it, and it gives it to us in scientific notation. So I'm going to say our answer is 7.8 times 10 to the 10th power. So um, if you guys were ever wondering, you know, why do some states have less values in their license plate? Um, why does California and some more populous states have more values? And that's because we need to have more options because there are more drivers out on the road. So we need to have more options for people for their license plates. Number five is really similar. Once again, we have this license plate. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But this time it tells us that no letter or number repeats. So we know that there are 36 options to begin with. Now, if whatever we put here cannot repeat, that means that we only have 35 options in the next place. And if these two can't repeat, we only have 34 options, and then 33, 32, 31, and 30. If we multiply these together, we get another really big number, okay, but it's definitely smaller than the one we had previously. We get 4.2 times 10 to the 10th power, okay? So what we're seeing here is that the ability to repeat values gives us a lot more options for our license plate. Something that you guys may have wondered about, I don't know, um, but in your lifetime, you guys have actually seen um, a lot of new area codes come about, okay? Um, like, believe it or not, it always used to be 909. There wasn't like 951 or anything like that. We have some different area codes now. And the reason why we have that is really because of the increase of phones that are used. It used to be that every single house only had one line, maybe two max. But now with every person having a cell phone, um, it really has increased the number of lines and phone numbers that we need to have available. So... Um, if you, were, if you were in class, we actually watched like this kind of cheesy video, but um, it goes through how like the city of Mass or the state of Massachusetts um, kind of deci decided they needed more area codes because they were running out of phone numbers. So they used the fundamental counting principle to figure it out. Okay, so number six, it says how many seven digit numbers? have 911 as the first three digits. Now, obviously, we know that no one has 911 as the first three digits. But this is just going to tell us, okay, how many numbers are available? Okay, we know if it's 911, okay, there, we know what numbers are there. So I'm writing a 1 because that's the only option, okay, because there's one option for 1 because we know it has to be 9. There's one option for the second one because it's one. There's one option for the third one because it's one. The rest of them all have 10 options because it could be zero through nine. So if we multiply these together, there are 10,000 numbers that hypothetically would start with 911. So on that note, number seven says, how many seven digit phone numbers are possible if the three digit, if the first three digits cannot be 911, 411, or 800. And the way that we've been doing this would be kind of difficult um, using this particular problem. So 
I want to introduce a very mathematical sounding principle. All minus bad equals good. Okay, and this sounds really weird or like a little kid saying this, but what this is saying is if we figure out all the possibilities minus the ones that will not work, that's going to give us our actual answer. Okay, so the first thing I want to do here is figure out how many seven-digit phone numbers are possible. And I know that that would be 10 to the seventh power because we're saying that every single value, there's no restrictions here on like zero being the first number. We're just being open-ended. Okay, 10, 10, 10, and so forth. Minus the bad options. Okay, we um, went ahead and showed in this previous example that there were 10,000 numbers for 911. So we can assume that there's also 10,000 numbers for 411 and 10,000 numbers for 800. So that would give us 30,000 numbers that are not any good. Okay, and you guys can see there's actually more numbers that we can't have than that, but um, hopefully this is just giving you an idea as to how we would think about a problem like this. So if I do um, 10 to the 7th power minus 30,000, and let me just remind us how we got those values. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, if that was my phone number. There we go. Um, that's giving us 10 to the 7th, and this is 3 times 10,000. That's how we're getting 30,000. And when I put that in, I get 9 million 970,000 phone numbers. Okay, and as we said earlier, there's in actuality less numbers than this per area code because we know a phone number does not start with zero. Um, there's also some other values that phone numbers don't start with, so there we go. In our last example, aren't you excited? This is a quick lecture. Um, how many four-digit integers can be formed? So we need to think of this term integers. Okay, an integer is a positive or negative counting number. So this is one that we are going to have to think a little bit. Okay, um, since it is an integer, I know my very first number here cannot start with a zero. It has to be one through nine because if this was zero, that means it would really only be a three-digit number. So there's two different ways I could think about this. The way that I normally think about it is that I have nine different options for that first slot. So I have one through nine. For my next three slots, I have 10 options because I'm adding zero into the mix. Then, since it could be positive or negative, I'm going to multiply by two because it could be all of these as positive numbers and also all of these as negative numbers. So when I multiply those all together, I get that there are 18,000 possible four-digit integers. The other way that you may have done this, you guys might have in this first spot said 18 instead of nine, because you might have thought, okay, one through nine and then negative one through negative nine would give me 18 values here. Notice I would still get 18,000, so it really doesn't matter which way we think about it. So all your problems um, on your suggested problems tonight are going to deal with this concept of the fundamental counting principle. So remember, we are just multiplying the different number of options together to get the total number of events possible for the situation at hand. So that's it. I hope you guys have a fabulous evening and have fun um, doing your homework.